Good evening, good evening, guys. Ba, ba, Matipa, can you take over? Let me just do something here. Good evening, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, viewers. As usual, it's nice to have you on this program. And uh, as we promised you the last time when we had our special guest, the man from Kolwezi who enlightened us on issues affecting our continent, our countries, as well as the Democratic Republic of Congo. We have with us Mr. Mark Lushimba again for part two of our program. We are here to continue where we left from, but this time around, we encourage our viewers to ask as many questions as possible so that um, he, can address your, he can address your questions. Remember the last time we did not have an opportunity for you, to, the audience, to ask questions to Mr. Lushimba. So Mr. Lushimba, once again, a very good welcome to you. We hope you're you so okay much. in you your so time much. zone. Thank it's you. a pleasure to have you on the program today, uh, Mr. Lushimba. Thank you, always a pleasure to see you and to talk to you. So today we are, uh, we are continuing from where we left. Um, I think we left, uh, we talked about so many things. We talked about, you actually addressed uh, uh, the viewers to purchase a lot of books concerning uh, things that have been happening in Rwanda, you know, uh, other things, other books like the bad news books. And we, we equally talked about Kagame's killing fields, enduring lies, bad news. Yeah. And yeah. You, you actually uh, urged us to buy Alison DeForge's Hidden Truth books yeah. so that we can enlighten ourselves with what is going on. That's and correct. how all these actions um, that are happening in our neighboring countries could slowly penetrate into this country. And you were just um, cautioning us to be very vigilant and uh, okay. to ask as many questions as possible. And so That's once great. again, Mr. Lushimba, welcome. Um, I would like to give you the floor to uh, continue where we, left, where we left from. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, as I said, you know, we need to be cautious as Africans, first of all, and the Zambian people, so they need to be cautious because the, I mean, the days are not good. And especially today's politics is not good. We are in the same region with Zambia. And we have some things in similar. That means we have some strategic minerals and the system in the world is like they don't want us to be the to be equal partners with them so that they could come to us in a very normal way they knock at the door we sit we discuss and then we sell them so that we can also build our countries our economy uh, to create stability in our country no the system is what we call <clears throat> exploitation system. They want to come and get it either at a cheap price or for nothing. To get it at a cheap price, that means they need to have a leader who's corrupt or a leader they're gonna put in power themselves. So they're gonna get it at a cheap price. If your leader is smart, patriot, you want to protect your country and the envy your minerals. They're going to do everything in their power to have access to those minerals through catastrophe. That's what, that's what is happening in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 
as I said, Laurent Desire Kabila was not a rich man. He was in Tanzania at that time. After using Mobutu Seseko by the same superpowers, they controlled Congo. Now, Mobutu is very old, they want to put him away, to use other people. And that was the electronic age now. That means they wanted some minerals they'll be using for electronic devices. Well, the bad idea is not to come to us. We are the owners of the country so that we could exchange. Win-win eh? business, no. They wanted to get them for free. That's why they had that scheme, that plan to create a station, as I told you, to put a disturbing station near the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And in their plan, they wanted to put Rwanda as a disturbing station. And they collected all the Tusi refugees who were around the world. They trained them in Uganda under the supervision of Yoweri Museveni. When everything was ready, they attacked Rwanda. And the trick that they used, as I said, was to isolate the government of that time, led by uh, Juvenal Abiyarimana, because it was from the majority, Hutu majority. So they saw that it would be very difficult to topple that guy. So America and many countries, they put an embargo, they cut every business, any connection with Rwanda, economic connection, military connection. So they isolated the government of that time to create poverty so that people, they can stand up and demonstrate against their president. And during that time, they started now attacking until they killed him. They put Kagame by force. After creating a chaos, they called it genocide. And during the genocide time, there is something a lot of people don't know. They cut every connection. That was in 1994. There was no internet that time, I think, in many countries. There was only telephone lines, radio and TV lines. Everything was cut for three months and some days. And if you read American specialist books, they will tell you that there was someone somewhere who was supervising that war from the White House, that was Bill Clinton. Because they didn't want the world to know what they were doing in Rwanda that time. They were controlling that war with the satellite. They were, uh, they were leading the Kagame rebel, uh, rebel movement with every communication devices they gave them until they got Rwanda. After Rwanda, they wanted now to attack the Congo. How, how should they attack the Congo? As I said, because Kagame from the minority would have had time to lead the country. So they urged Mobutu to open the borders of the Congo so that the Hutu people who are no longer in power could flee in the Congo as refugees. Mobutu didn't want to do that. They forced him. So to avoid problems, Mobutu accepted that the Hutu could come out as refugees. And we had more than 1,500,000 refugees in two months. And then after two, three months, there were like more than 2 million refugees in the Congo and the chaos started. And the refugees were in the Kivu provinces, close to Rwanda. So the Kagame's coaches, they, they, th they thought that Kagame was still in danger because these refugees, if they stay in the Congo close to the Rwandan borders, they will train again to go back to Rwanda and attack. And still they're the minority, Kagame is gonna be taken out. So they needed to do something fast. 
so to attack Congo now. How should we, how should they attack Congo? There was, there was no problem between our country, Rwanda, Burundi, and all other countries, no. That's why they went to Tanzania to find Laurent Desiree Kabila. They say, okay, Mobutu is an old dictator. He doesn't want to relinquish power, so we need to put him away so that we can introduce democracy in your country. Laurent Desiree Kabila didn't see anything bad. He said, yes. He had nothing in his pocket. So it's not Laurent Desiree Kabila who brought those people into Congo, no. It's those people who brought Laurent Desiree Kabila in the Congo, they put him in front as a Congolese. When your brother's gonna see you, they will be willing to open all their arms and doors and we're gonna get into the Congo easily because Congo is a very huge country that cannot be conquered in six months, in one year, no. That's what they did, a trick, very smart people. So when Laurent, Laurent Desiree Kabila came from outside, we acclaim, oh, Mobutu should go as a dictator. So it was like a Trojan horse, right? You remember yes. the story of it? So you know yes. what? And uh, we are happy to have you here because yes. history always repeats itself. Yes, that's so what they did. It's like their will has, there is a master script. Yes. In simple terms, what our brother is saying, there yeah. is a master script. So what happened yeah. to Congo is history repeating itself. It's a Trojan horse kind yes. of system of taking over. Correct. So, and we have to be aware, we are just bringing awareness here. Yes. And uh, before you continue, I just want uh, to let people know this page is still the same page. We just changed the name. I changed the name because it was carrying my name to say Queen Pumi Show, but I'm not the only one here. <laughs> so I said live on it, QPS. Okay. So we are taking away, like it's, I feel like it was just me about me when I say Queen Pumi Show, but it's a team of us. Okay. <laughs> so that's why I thought, I, I don't know, we'll see, maybe you guys can suggest a better name, but for now, I just thought, let me use live on QPS. Because yeah, we're gonna take, it's going to take some time before we come up with a name, we're going to write to you. Yes, yes. So give us suggestions how you'd like to call this show. And also, I want the viewers to know that there is some interception on this page. Some mm -hmm. people, they are not getting notifications that we are live. So okay. what I can ask you, if you see that we are live, share in your groups. They cannot okay. inter intercept that. Yes. So guys, be patriotic. What is it? What information we are sharing here is the life-saving information. Yeah. It is life-saving information that can save Zambia and African generations to come. We are saying some tactics being used are tactics with, which have been used in history. So we need to be aware and identify things to say, this looks like this, the traits. Even a child, yeah. when his child is growing up, you see the behavior, you are like, I think this child will be like this. So let us use our instinct let us not ignore people who have come to share information. And I also want to say there are praise singers here who are just praising blindly. But my question to you is, we are here to work with HH. We voted for HH. We want HH to do the right thing. So if HH one day wakes up and decides to do, to fulfill his campaign promises, what are you going to do? Because you are following blindly. As we are just saying, HH, follow through your promises is all we are saying. Nobody hates HH. We are all here for a better Zambia. Congo, there are brothers in Congo there. These tribes on the border with Congo, there are families in Congo. And it's about time we bring light to this Congo problem so it can stop. Because if it doesn't stop, it's going to come to Zambia. And we have seen the steps which are being taken. 
to come to Zambia. It is coming. So we are saying Zambians, let us stop it in the tracks. Let us share information, share the page so that people can know we are live. I know there are a lot of civil servants who can't come live when we are live. So we, we have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow these topics on YouTube. They are very important. I will hand over the floor to you, Mr. Lushimba. And before I do that, today I woke up, someone sent me a video from a young girl who is a prophetess and was talking about uh, the death of Paul Kagame. Mm. I was just like, wow, young girls, are they are preaching. And the grown people like you and me, most of you, I know you are our children, but people like you and me who are grown, if we are not talking, then what are we going to leave our children? The generations to come. What is happening in Congo is going to spread throughout Africa. And this That's time what, because of it's, the complexity. It's always been their plan. It's always yes. been their plan. So if we Africans <laughs> don't stand up, Africa will be taken and this time we can never get out because mm. it's complicated when the, you have a military base of a, a certain country. In your country, who is a superpower? How can you get out of their um, hand? I was following a speech of a certain MP from Romania, one lady this morning. She was saying the earthquake that happened in Turkey and some other countries, it was a man-made earthquake. <laughs> wow. Sci scientific earthquake. <laughs> uh, they say, okay, anything is possible today. It's science. Everything starts with yes, electronics. Yes, technology. technology. Electronics. Yeah. Uh, there's too much power in electronics. Yes. They can control you from far away. They can send drones to kill you while they are just sitting exactly. in the offices of Exactly, America. yeah. So you need to be careful. That's what I was saying, right. you know? And then- Queen, uh, yeah. please, uh, people are asking if you can continue to share the link because uh, there are people who would like to join uh, the live at one point. So kindly just uh, keep posting the link for- The, the Zoom keep... link? Yes. Okay. All right, Thank go you. ahead, Mr. Lushinga. Yeah, that's what I was saying. And knowing that Congo is a very huge country and the Kagame, the Tusi people, it's a minority, first of all, in Rwanda, you see. Comparing to the Congo population, but that time Congo had like 70, uh, 70, million people and Rwanda had like nine or eight million. So they, they thought it would be very tough to fight and get into Kinshasa, the capital city. That's why they came up with the plan to find the Congolese who was uh, you know, an, a, an, an opposition leader. They found Rwanda Zere Kabila who was in Tanzania. They brought him to Uganda to Museveni. Museveni talked with uh, Kabila, Laurent Desiree Kabila, and it's Museveni who introduced Laurent Desiree Kabila to Kagame, because Kagame and Laurent Des Desiree Kabila didn't know each other before. Everything was being played, was being played that time in Uganda, even the training camps, where they were training those Rwanda and Tusi, it was in Uganda. Then after conquering Rwanda, now, that was the turn of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Kabila, they put him in front, as I said. We opened our arms, we sang praise. That is, that was liberation time, so that Mobutu, the dictator, should be out now. It was very easy. In six months, from the Eastern Congo up to Kinshasa, that was at least 2,000 kilometers. They got Kinshasa, Laurent Desiree Kabila was with them. We saw Rwandan soldiers in the Congo, Ugandan soldiers in the Congo, 
we greeted them. That was a period of joy until we heard that they are not in good terms. Again, Kabila and Paul Kagame and the William Seveni of Uganda, there was a misunderstanding between, among those guys. Kabila in some speeches started saying that he has noticed that those people, they didn't come to Congo to help us. They have started stealing minerals in the Kivu regions in the eastern part of the Congo until there was a new crisis. They started stealing gold, any kind of minerals, coltan. Because the main mineral they wanted was coltan that comes into activity when you want to make cell phones, space shuttles, computers, drones, anything that's electronic. That was the mineral they were aiming at. And then the Rwandan people and Ugandan people, they started stealing. Kabila couldn't control those people who brought him into the Congo. He organized several meetings to tell them, we are brothers, please. You don't need to steal. We didn't agree. Our agreements, we know we signed some papers before getting into the Congo. What we are doing now is not what we agreed upon. And then Kabila said, now enough is enough. He went to Rwanda and Uganda to talk with Museveni and Kagame. He said, what your soldiers are doing now in the Congo is not correct. My people are angry until he ordered the departure, immediate retreat of the Rwandan and Ugandan armies from the Congo. Instead of retreating, they didn't want to retreat. They went to the border, the border of Congo and Rwanda they gathered in Rwanda on Rwandan side, and then they started fighting Laurent Desiree Kabila. That was a new rebel movement organized by Western sponsors using the same Ugandan and Rwandan armies to come and attack Laurent Desiree Kabila, saying that we put you into power, we made you what you are today, and we're gonna destroy you now. <laughs> That was the beginning of another war that started in 19, uh, 90, 1998 on the, the, the 2nd of August until this day. They have killed a lot of people in the Congo. Uh, specialists, they say it's now 12 million dead. As I said last time, if you read the book, they said, the genocide of Rwanda claimed the lives of 800,000 people. And the Congolese genocide, which they don't wanna call genocide. No, they don't call it genocide until today. They call it just murder, murders, massacres. It claimed the lives of 12 million people. If you try not to do the maths, you're gonna see that the genocide in the Congo is 15 times the genocide in Rwanda. And comparing to the Jewish Holocaust, it's two times the Jewish Holocaust. That means the Congolese people are the most killed in the history of humanity, human beings. But how come everybody is quiet? The so-called international community is very quiet, the United Nations, quiet, European, European Union is quiet, African Union, quiet. What's going on? What is wrong? This is, this has always been our question as Congolese people, first of all, and a lot of people now are trying to question the idea behind what is being done in the Congo. And to cut a long story short, it's the war for minerals. That's what I, I told you last time that Every village, town, city attacked by Kagame. If you watch your TV, even from Zambia, from wherever you are, if you see the movement, the displacement of people, if people are being displaced from one point to another one, that means there is a gold mine in the vicinity. There's either a gold mine, a coltan mine, a wolframite mine, 
and there's Kasito Ratman. We have a lot of minerals in the Congo. They displace those people so that they can occupy those lands and start to dig. After doing that, they always take everything to Rwanda. All these Westerners, they are doing business not with the Congo. They are doing business with Yoweri Museveni of Uganda and Paul Kagame of Rwanda. That means Kigali and Kampala are two business places where everything stolen from the Congo are being taken and sold from there. That's why in return, they're giving a lot of head, a lot of head in terms of uh, United Nations. They give some aid to the Rwanda, economic aid, uh, World Bank, you know, it's like a kind of thank you to Kagame and Museveni because a lot of Western companies, Western governments in 25 years of war, plundering the Congo, they've become billionaires. That's why when they talk about Kagame on CNN, BBC, or any other TV, Western TV, they show us Kagame as a successful president. Uh, he has managed to rebuild Rwanda and to, to make of Rwanda now one of the cleanest country in the world, well-organized country, and so on and so forth. <laughs> This is the same guys because they control the media. They're selling us Kagame is a good guy. But the reality in Rwanda is not what they show us. Rwanda is like a cemetery, you see. Rwanda is like uh, a graveyard. When you get into a graveyard, you're gonna see that there's some green lawn. Some tombs are clean, painted in white, green, beautiful, you see. But the problem is underground. What is beneath the tombs? Bones, skeletons. Oh, there's the foulest stench. Everything stinks. That means in Rwanda, the reality beneath the image of Kagame, they sell us in the world. Beneath that image, there are a lot of skeletons, bones, mafia, murder, uh, assassinations. But they don't want to show us that that side of Kagame. Because Kagame, as I said, and Museveni, they are their house Negroes who work for the Anglo-Saxon killing machine, period. That's what I can say. If some people have questions <coughs> from up to here, I'm ready to answer. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, my brother. That is something, you know, it is just uh, chilling, and mind boggling that just across the Zambian border, we have this war that no one talks about. It's like a modern day slavery. For me as a mother, I, you know, I, I, I'm at pains, you know, like just seeing child slaves, you know? And we have the United Nations who are talking about human rights. So does it mean that black people, our rights are not equal to the rights of other people of other races? Because honestly, as a humanity, as humans, how can we allow a war for 30 years, 12 million people dead and it's ongoing? It's time for us to think and do the right thing. Yeah. As I said, 15 times the Rwanda genocide and two times the Jewish Holocaust. Yeah, but it's look, like, what are we doing as human yeah. beings? What every are we year, doing? Every year they make a lot of noise about the Jewish Holocaust <laughs> and Rwanda genocide. Yeah, African make, Union, what ceremony. are you doing? And for That's me about, now, why I am really want to talk about this, because our president went to sign something in a country yes. where there is a modern day slavery. We're going to reach, we're we're gonna reach that this. point. <laughs> we're going to reach that point. I wanted to introduce to you how they put Congo into trouble, how trouble came to the Congo. 
German people, oh. they need to know how those people, they operate. If they want to plunder your country, they want to destroy it. Uh, they come smoothly to sign. If your president, if you see any African president, start signing, signing, signing. Uh, open your eyes. It's going to sell out your country. <laughs> It's a Trojan horse. Everybody knows the Trojan horse. That's what they do. This is this history always repeats itself. Guys, we yeah. watch movies. Those movies, some of them, they are true. If you can't read a book, watch a movie. Those movies, those tactics they use in military, in conquering countries, they are actually applicable. They use them in the 16th, 17th, whatever centuries, but those methods, they are applicable even today. So, <laughs> okay, I muted her. So we are saying, let's be aware. The Trojan horse, I think this is the simplest way we can explain it. Because we've all seen that movie about the Trojan horse. And me, I'm here to say the minerals are not going everywhere, anywhere. I'm a minerals, they will be here. And there's enough for the whole world to share. Why can't we have civil trade? Whereas Congolese people, they have an equal share of their wealth. Most importantly, let them have a human, a humane life. Yeah. Let Congolese people have human rights. <laughs> Let the Congolese people, children, be given a right to go to school instead of working in the mines. Yes, Mama Machipa. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Queen Mkumi. We had uh, our brother there uh, enlightening us uh, about the history of our, all, all this Congo debacle started about, and we've always wondered why Congo has allowed this to happen right in front of their eyes. We have seen Congo deteriorate over the years, as you said, because the West have encouraged this to happen. A lot of mines were sold to the Chinese during, during Karila's reign in exchange for some little development in the DRC. Plenty of mines were sold. We all thought when Ch with Chisekedi coming into power, DRC will be a diamond of Africa. And so my question to Mr. Mark uh, um, Ushimba would be, have the West succeeded in setting up a military base in the Congo in the name of peacekeeping mission? Because I know they have peacekeeping mission yeah, there. That's what I wanted to tell you. This United Nations peacekeeping mission in the Congo, or if you try to look at all those peacekeeping missions around African countries, they have something in similar. They brought them in the Congo, what's the number? 20,000 peacekeepers in the Congo. And they will, if you read books, they will tell you that in the history of the United Nations, that's a huge peacekeeping mission in the history of the United Nations. But how come uh, for 15, 20 years, they haven't done anything to bring peace to the Congo? That's the question. We can ask ourselves. And each time the contract comes to the end, they don't want those peacekeepers to get out of the Congo. They force any government in place that time so that those guys there, they could remain there. We found it suspicious. Now, if you try to see, you follow the news, Several times you're going to see in the eastern part of the Congo, youth, they demonstrate against the peacekeeping missions. I think you have, you have seen that. They throw stones 
to those white trucks, United Nations trucks, because those people are living in the war zone. They know what is really happening in there. What are they going to tell you? These so-called MONUSCO, United Nations Mission in the Congo, they have some mines somewhere there. All the trucks they bring to, they've brought to the Congo. They've brought even some uh, big trucks to dig <laughs> minerals in the Congo. After they take the, those minerals, there's a safe way to Rwanda. Everything is being brought to Rwanda. That's why youth in those, I mean, war zones, they always attack those trucks. And if you follow every news, they will tell you that they're doing nothing in the Congo. How can you have such a huge mission in the Congo? 20,000 people, but there's still war. We came to an understanding that, that that's not a peacekeeping mission. It's an occupying mission. They bring them in your, in your country to occupy a uh, large portion of land so that they can exploit them. Those guys, they exploit our minerals too, and they bring them to Rwanda. That it's like the hand. We have come to a certain understanding that the blue helmets, it's a, the hand of these superpowers. Instead of invading your country, bringing their military in your country, they bring the so-called peacekeeping missions. This is the new trick. You need to open your eyes. They will create havoc in your country, confusion. And then in the end, the same guys are gonna sit in the security council in New York saying that we're gonna bring to Zambia, for instance, a peacekeeping mission. No, it's an occupying force. Once they're in, in your country, they're gonna be in the regions where there are minerals, saying that you're protecting people here, but they will do nothing. They are still in the Kiev. They've been there for 20, 25 years. Check, follow the news. People are being killed day in, day out. But those guys are still there. We have this rebel group made of Rwandan and Ugandan soldiers, so-called M23. The M23 is operating in the same region where the United Nations keeping, the peacekeeping mission is. They're doing nothing. Can you imagine? And recently- and so, so Mr. Lushimba, this begs yeah. us to ask the question, why yeah. our president decided to do business with a country that is at war. We Zambians are yearning. We are yearning, I would like to repeat, mm -hmm. to know what was in that memorandum of association. We need uh, to know, we deserve to know. It is yeah. our right to know what is being sold from our country or what engagements you are getting into on behalf of the citizens of this country. Yeah. That is our biggest question. You see, because we said it on this program, it would have been better to actually set up factories and produce those electric batteries in this country or in Congo itself and export them to the West. So why do we have to take our lithium, Congo's lithium, you know, and so many other minerals out of the country. And we are just hearing from the grapevine that all we are getting is 10% of the whole deal. Actually, it's not 10%. Congo is getting 10%. Zambia, we don't know what we are getting. So we are probably getting nothing. The only thing we'll get is they are going to set up factory and employee, is it 700 people? <laughs> Ah, that's a problem. You know, the mem memorandum of understanding, actually there is, there are three things that your president, Akainde Ichilema, got into. The first one, I read it, the 
the first one to get money from the International Monetary Fund. Zambia didn't want that money, but they forced him to get the money. Eh? That is not for free. No. Anyway, that's what they do. It's one of their tricks. Akainde Chilema was forced to get money from the International Monetary Fund. It's like one, three, and a lot of zeros there. Did you Zambian people beg for money from the international uh, community? I guess no. That money was forced onto your president so that they can create a link to get him in future so that they cannot run away from them. And it's not for free, it's not a gift. <coughs> Zambia is gonna pay back for that money. Uh, how are you going to use that money? Why did they give you that money? These are the questions that the Zambian government, Zambian MPs, senators, human rights organization, you should look into. Ask your president, did you ask for that money? How much did they give you? Where is that money? Because it's proven, it's written that that money was given to you already, number one. Number two, they called him or your government members to the US embassy in Lusaka to sign another memorandum of understanding so that America could build up a base in your country. Huh? That's the Pentagon that's gonna come and build it. They're gonna call it, how do they call it? Africa. Africa. African Command. Ellington has a hand up. Yes, they're gonna bring it in your country. Did you Zambian people ask for that? Do you really need an American base in Zambia? What's what are going to be the benefits if they put that thing in your country? That's number two. Number three, how come Congo being a country in trouble for more than 25 years? It's not 25 years today. Nobody is ready to pressurize the African Union, the SADC region, any organization, so that people that could see it or they can see it first and sign memorandums so that they can bring peace in the Congo, bro, uh, followed by stability, democracy, well-organized elections, then everything's gonna start from there. Nobody, everybody is ready to leave the chaos in the Congo, to multiply the chaos, but they are fast to see it with politicians, Congolese politicians who were not even elected by the Congolese people. As I told you last time, there's no longer state in the Congo. There's no state in the Congo. The army doesn't function very well. The police, everything is in chaos. But African leaders, we can understand if Western leaders, they come to the Congo to sign stupidity because it's in their nature. They don't want anything good come, coming from Africa. How come African leaders, we're supposed to say, no, we are member of the SADC region, for instance, members of the African Union. Congo has been suffering for more than 25 years. Let's bring, first of all, peace to the Congolese people, democracy, stability. Then we can see it and see how to sign any other thing about minerals. No, everybody is ready to sign anything about dealing with Congolese people's minerals while the owners of the minerals are mourning. They are being killed like chickens every day. There is no stability. People are starving. They are moving them from villages, from towns, from cities. This is our question. Let those people from the West do that to can understand. They don't have any interest to see us living or leading a good life. But how come a, a bro, an African brother, instead of thinking twice, no, I'm not going to do that. And a closest neighbor, Zambian president, he knows, as I told you, how Felix Sekedi got into power. Felix Sekedi, during the 2018 election, he had 15%. 
He was not elected. The guy who was elected was Martin Fayulu, was supposed to become the president. As I told you, they cut the radio, TV, and internet signals for 21 days to put Segedi there. We will understand Segedi is not to work for them. And Akain de Chilema as a president is well positioned to know that this guy, Felix Segedi, is at the presidency, at the state house, not by the will of the Congolese people. He's a cheater. He's being used by the West. So how come your president allowed that thing to be brought <laughs> to your country? That's our question. And uh, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think um, um, Ellington has a question. This discussion was meant on us, uh, you know, putting in our contribution. So uh, as soon as we see a hand go up, let's allow yeah, yeah. our friend. So Ellington, I was just waiting for Mr. Lushimba to finish his point. Ellington, uh, you can come on. Hello, Ellington. Thank you so much, Mr. Lushimba. Good evening. How much come on, <laughs> Good evening, viewers. Good Hello. evening. <laughs> Good evening, Queen Pumi. Good evening. Good evening. Good to see you. Good to see you. You are okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, I have a very strong message to give across, especially to the young people that are watching. Our senior comrade, our father, is giving so much insight. But I must say this once and for all. I think I've now been pushed to the wall several times, and I think it's high time when you heard what truly lives in my heart as Eddington Poker. First of all, I'll start with this. I want to thank you, this platform, and every person that has listened to everything that we have to say. And I have to make sure and very clear that we don't speak for ourselves. Those people that think we speak for benefits, I don't think any of anyone here speaks for a coin. No one wants to get paid by anyone. We speak for the justice of this country and we want to see the best of this country. When we mention a sitting head or the government that is currently driving the affairs of this country, we don't mean harm, but we mean justice. Arriving at this point, we don't have a problem with trading with anyone in the world. We need to understand this. We can trade with anyone. We can do business. We can sign contracts with anyone. It's not a problem to sign with America. But what the problem is, is what is signed. If we don't understand what we're signing, that's where the problem is. If a friend from America tells me, I need to export, I need to ship out a shoe, for him made by Zambians and he's going to pay for it and he's going to pay fairly for it. I don't have a problem trading with him because he's interested in doing the correct business. Now, what the problem is with Zambia, I always say before I touch on Africa, I'll touch on Zambia, is our people, our leaders, they want to be undervalued. Our leaders, especially in this time, our president, if you are listening, Mr. Akainde, you want to be undervalued. You are leaders who have been there before us. You know the value of business. You want to who sell our minerals at a very cheap cost. And that cost involves the people of Zambia. Why should you allow your friend to get things that you know are more worth being to you than to them? Let me put this on record. Every time that we speak, we don't speak to defend the opposition. I know a lot of us have given sentiments to say, um, you know, the government, the government, the government, and this has created a notion, I must say, it has created a notion thinking now the opposition were speaking for them. Frankly, I'm not speaking for any opposition person. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not challenging Mr. Aka India and his government to do better so that the opposition gains mileage. I'm not doing that. I'm speaking for the young people, the children that are not born today. If today, Mr. Aka India, you sign a deal 
that is going to improve the one-year-old child in the copper belt today for the rest of their lives, I'm going to salute you. But if you are going to sign a deal that is going to deprive the great grandchildren of this country, I will condemn you. So first of all, to the opposition leaders, wherever you are, I don't care. I'm not speaking so that you gain momentum. I'm putting this on record. A lot of people have been saying, no, he's speaking. Yes, let him speak so that the government will feel the pressure from us oppositions. I'm not with you, the opposition. To start with, these opposition leaders, most of them have been in government before. They have contributed to these problems we're passing through. I'm not speaking for them to start rejoicing. When I challenge the UPND, I don't mean the PF should rejoice. I don't mean the UNIP should rejoice. I don't mean the FDD should rejoice or whoever they are, socialist party or whatever. I don't want them to rejoice. If they are going to rejoice in us challenging the government, then they're not doing their job. These oppositions, they've got MPs in that parliament. The question is, what are your MPs doing? You, the opposition leaders and the opposition people, including the president and his government today, you have contributed to the mess we're in. And we don't need all of you. As young people, we don't need any of you. We don't need you, the opposition leaders. We don't need you, the governing leaders. We need people that are going to have the peace and the love for this country. Whoever that person will be, we're going to support them. But not all of you. You can be fighting to be presidents in your political parties. And I can assure you, you are going to remain presidents of your political parties. You're not going to be presidents of this country. If you think 2026, those of you that are rebranding, those of you that are going in communities, show, showing pictures, cooking on small pots that you don't do in a brazier at your home because you want people to be sympathetic about you. We don't speak for you. We don't speak to champion you. This is a message to the opposition leaders, opposition parties. If you think we're challenging the UPND because we want you to come, no one wants you to be in power because you have been there and you have contributed. Now, back to how this country should develop. This country is only going to develop if the leaders start making the correct decisions. These correct decisions are all about what we sign. If today the government of Zambia signs a deal with China to train 1 million Zambians in electronic understanding, we're going to salute because that is a progressive move. We're not going to condemn. But if they are going to sign a deal to take every single mineral from our country, then we're going to condemn. It doesn't matter who the leader is at that point. This we must put on record. We have seen from the examples that you, our, our, our father is telling us. We have seen from Rwanda, we have seen from Congo, but it's us, the young people that are seeing these problems. Why? Because we are able to realize quicker. Do you know why the elder politicians or these leaders are not able to see these problems? It's because some of them were there when these things were happening. So for them, they've become immune to these problems. They can't understand, they can't see when we challenge these problems. Me, I am only 32 years old. But if we am going to tell this message that you're telling me to my father, Aka Inde, who is about over, over 60 or maybe 50 something years old, he was going to answer me to say, I know what you're telling me and we have been through them. He's not going to feel the impact. The impact. Why? He has been through them. Now, should it take us young people to go through the same problems for us to make the right decisions? That's a question we need to ask. Because them, they went through the hardships of their fellow leaders, the people who are making the worst decisions. Now they want to make the worst decisions for us also to go through. That's not the kind of leadership we need. We want a person, a leader, a father, a mother who's going to say, I don't want these things to happen to my children. Those are the leaders we want. But uh, all openly, what this government is doing is clear. It is telling you, the young people, that you, whether you like it or not, you are going to go through these problems. Just because they went through these problems, they are going to make sure that we, the young people, go through them. And that is what I am talking about. When we say no recycled politicians, we don't have anything personal with any senior politician. But the truth is, these people are part of the problems. 
And all of them have kept on being a part of these problems. We can mention a lot of them and the wrong decisions they have made. Mr. Haka Inde Ichidema was part of the problem 20 years ago that this country faced. And he is now coming back to be a bigger problem that this country. To finish us off, buy some, buy some to predict number. So when we talk, you, the opposition, should not think you are defending you. From your crop, you will respect you, we love you, you are our fathers, but we don't need you back in government. No one needs you. If a young person is telling you, no, we need you, honorable, we will vote for you, they are lying to you. We should know that. You keep rebranding, and when you rebrand, you remain political opposite leaders. You remain presidents of opposition political parties. This country should not repeat these mistakes. And even after we outgo the UPND, this country should never repeat a politician that has been part of our problems. These are things that we need to tell our children in our homes to say, Abole Mona, by government 20 years ago, and he's still part of the government. He has never provided any solution. Let me tell you something. Most of the people in the UPND now, even if you say it's not everyone that was in government, they have been close friends with those people that have been in government. They have been business colleagues with those people that are in government. They have done business even today. Don't let them fool you. You see them in the newspaper insulting each other. Go at Protea Hotel during lunch hour. You find them having lunch together. Who are you fooling? If you vote for them, you are fooling yourself. None of them is better than the other. All these leaders, none of them is better than the other, and none of them will be better than the other. The only people that can change this country to a better country, the people that can understand the economical challenges in this time and era is you and me, my young brother, my young sister. Only, and I believe that you, my young brother and my young sister, you've got the wisdom and knowledge and skill enough to head that department, to head that institution, to head that sector in this country. Unless you doubt yourself, unless you doubt yourself, unless you tell me you're not competent enough. I mean, that is what our fathers and our mothers here are advocating for. They are trying to support us, the young people. But we, the young people, are the ones who are trying to de-appreciate ourselves. And insulting us, you know. And uh, not to cut you short, Ellington, I think uh, let's ask a question to our, uh, uh, our guests so we can let him go and then we can continue with the show. So, so my, a, question, yeah. my question to our guest is, yes. do you think these countries that you talk about, I will not only single out Zambia because you talk about a lot of countries in Africa. Do you think these countries in Africa are ready for young leadership? Do you think they are ready? Or we need to continue supporting these people that have been part of our problems? Also, thank you very much for the question, Ellington. I really don't think, because even if you try to see in the Congo, you try to see the politicians, many of them, they are now with Felix Sekedi. The same guys were with Joseph Kabila. <laughs> when Laurent Desiree Kabila came, some of them, they followed him. And another part of those guys, they were with Mobutu. Huh? We've been complaining in the Congo so that, how can we develop the Congo with this new era, technology era, with the same old guys? No, that's how the country is going nowhere. If your country is weak, we need the support of all, what we call the sub-region organization, like SADC, for instance. Well, why are we part of those sub-region organizations? It's because we need to put our, our heads together so that we can see how to provide good leadership, not for ourselves, for the youth. And Congo also is in trouble because people don't want to relinquish power. The opponent, in, I mean, one another, 
Not because they know what's going on. Because those guys are wise. They are smart. No. They have taken the government business as a private business. You become the president. You appoint your friend, the son of your friend, your friend's girlfriend. That's what they're, they're, they're killing many African countries. And the other problem is the African Union. I don't know if you investigated on that thing. Did you know that the African Union doesn't have any budget to run itself? <laughs> the African Union always get the support from the, the European Union. That means it's the European Union that controls the African Union. That means the one who gives you money, the one who, is the one who controls you. Is the person who controls you, is the one who's gonna dictate who's gonna be part of your government or not. Can you imagine? It's not the people. We can, you can, we can organize any kind of election, but as long as we, are, we don't control our minerals, we don't control our money, our resources, we're not, we are not controlling our future. That means they're gonna call us on the phone as a president of the Congo, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa. Bring that guy, put that guy into your government because we have connections with that guy. That's what they do on the phone. They impose some members of our African government that are, they are imposed by the West on the phone. You see, that's the problem. So I have a question. So, um... I saw a post from a powerful Ghanaian preacher and he said, he was saying the enemy is within. That's uh, the subject of that, uh, the YouTube uh, clip. The enemy is within. And he talked about our ancestors sold as Africans into slavery. And now we come here, it's 2023. We are seeing a young president by Zambian standards, like our president, Mr. Akainde Ichilema, who is well accomplished with a wealth of knowledge falling to the same trap. So my question is to you is what is our solution? Because uh, a lot of people are really disappointed with our president because we thought he would be different. He will come on the African platform and set a new, it's like a new dawn, you know? They caught themselves the new dawn. So we were like, oh my God, this man with all the education, all the knowledge, he can set Africa on the right path. You know, that's what we thought. But we have a, a Trojan horse being created in Zambia. <laughs> Nepotism is the highest. He is doing exactly what the previous government was doing, appointing all his relatives, but uh, uh, my question is, uh, Congo has a huge population. It's almost 100 million people. So what can Congo do using their population to bring people together? What is, are you guys doing anything using technology to have topics like this? Because I'm telling you, Africa, we are going to be in a deep hole if we entertain like the, the presidents of the likes of Mr. Tichilema coming to power in 2023 and, and doing the same things that are taking Africa centuries back. You know, it's a shame really. It is a shame that African presidents are the problem. It's not the West. A Zambian president cannot go to you to, to, to Pentagon and tell Pentagon what to do, to set up a mission in California. For what? We buy cell phones from California, from Apple. Do we have to set up office in, 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 in America to buy a cell phone or in China? Do we have to set up a military base in China to buy all their goods? Queen Impumi, I just, um, um, sorry, just a little guidance on uh, our brother, Mr. Mark uh, Lushimba. I think. Uh, Today we talked about uh, interacting even with the viewers. So maybe our brother, Mr. Lushimba, could just jot down some of the questions. Okay, like let, me, let me read them. I think it will be hard for him. So let me pull up the question. There was one question I wanted him to, 
the guy has asked a question, one of our viewers, um, there was a question from, uh, I can't see it now, but it well, was can, about- can I, just, uh, can I, can I just, I've can I just, i been jotting down some of the questions I've actually okay. been writing down. Yeah. So just before I ask uh, this question, I just want to echo what uh, uh, our dear son Ellington uh, voiced out that um, we are here to speak for the next generation. Um, oh, I also want to add that we, we equally are the voice for the voiceless. We speak for the men and women as well as our next generation back in a small village in Zambia. We do not need selfish leaders in this country. What is, what is it that the former leaders that have been in government think they can do now when they come back that they did not do before. Now, having said that, there was a question from a Mr. Vincent Mwape uh, to our brother, Mr. Lushimba, and he says, how secure is Zambia in relation to other countries when the African office in Zambia is set up, especially with countries that are anti-West? I don't know if you've gotten that question. And then yeah. somebody is, could you please present your point to us on the DRC and Zambia's deal? So the people are yearning for information on that deal, what it entails for Zambia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And yes, also, yes. last, can you add the question, what do you say about threats? We are being threatened here to say we are painting the president black and blue, we are going to bring war in Zambia. So maybe that's <laughs> one of the, the questions you can, you can add or oh, okay. speak about. Okay, no problem. I think I'm gonna answer by starting with your questions. We are not going to bring war to Zambia. We don't have any power. Yeah? <laughs> Some people are in power. Those who control Zambia, they are the, the state house, those who control the military, the police, secret services, are the guys who can bring anything to Zambia or take anything out of Zambia. So I think maybe there is too much power in the intelligence, in the mind. Maybe they think that we are trying to open the Zambian people's mind. That's why they are, they are scared. They want Zambian people to stay in the dark. <laughs> We're not going to bring go to Zambia. We are trying to Make sure that Zambian people, they can open their spiritual mind, their intellectual mind. What is causing Africa, I mean, to be in trouble? It's because most of African people, they don't think about politics. They've pushed us into religion too much. A lot of people, they are ready to go and pray in the name of Jesus, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, we are blessed already. You are blessed already. They go sleep. But look at the, the kind of life we live for 10, 20 years. Life doesn't change. So every day, every day they tell us we are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed, while we are not really. Because African people have been cheating on, it, on us. We don't need to do that. We need to get informed. The West knows very well that it's very difficult to fight a people or a nation made of people who are informed, people who know the truth. It's gonna be very difficult to conquer that nation. That's why they do everything to leave African people into, I mean, stupidity. How do they do that? Then they don't come to your country and do it straight directly. They use your own leaders. Understand why they always fight to control your elections, to control your leaders, to get into your country using the Trojan horse. Mm? They come to your country portraying themselves as benefactors. We're gonna give you this money. As the money get, they gave to your president. I, I ask you a question. Did you ask for that money from the International Monetary Fund? No. Did you need that money? No. How come they gave that money to him? 
your opposition leaders, they wrote it in a letter. I read the letter, three points. They wanted your president, they wanted the, your president to explain why he got money from the International Monetary Fund, why he allowed the American, he accepted that they could come and erect a US base in your country, and why he signed the lithium deal in the United States of America, three things. We need to understand, to ask questions to our leaders. We are not ready to bring any war anywhere. No, this is not our mission. Our mission is human right. As long as the guys in power, they do good things. We're gonna appreciate that, we're gonna applaud. I think I've answered. The second question, how our self is gonna be Zambia if they bring that US military base? into Zambia itself. And, the other, and the other neighboring countries. How other neighboring other countries. countries. Usually, when they bring that, that base to your country, as it's already, it's already in Uganda and Rwanda, look at the kind of life people are living in Rwanda. Rwanda is safe. Huh? Uganda seems to be safe. Obviously, Zambia is not going to be, I mean, in trouble, but they're going to be using Zambia as a troubling station, as I said. And why? They cannot put a base for nothing. Check the surroundings. Why did they choose Zambia? Because they know they want to destabilize neighboring countries using Rwanda, uh, I mean, Zambia as the station. If you try to see from, from the base in Rwanda, they've managed to invade the Eastern part of the Congo for 25 years and more, stealing minerals every day. Now, Zambia can be used because we have the Copper Belt region, as I told you which is a neighboring region with the Katanga region in the Congo. Those two regions, they're like twin regions, Copper Belt and Katanga. Uh, they are stuck like this together. They're full of copper, cobalt, and a lot of minerals. They don't even name them. I think America want to possess, to control Zambian minerals. And then America will be using Zambia to destabilize the southern part of the Congo. And that's going to be worse. So looks like your president is going to sell Zambia to the Americans so that they can use it to control you, first of all to control any opposition voice. Do you understand? Huh? If they erect that base in your country, that means it's a very huge secret service machine. They're gonna put any kind of device, even to control you Zambian people. Any conversation from your government will be intercepted. Huh? <laughs> They're gonna push your president to do what they want. If he said yes, he accepts every agreement, they're gonna be using him to silence any opposition voice. Can you imagine? So they're gonna control your country. They're gonna kill the democracy you have. As I said in my last video, we envy you Zambian people. You are a peaceful country. You've been a peaceful country for many, many years. Keep that peace, guys. Huh? Keep that peace. Don't let anyone come to disturb your peace. Peace is the most valued good you can have. Even if you have minerals, diamond, gold, if you're not, your country is not in peace, you, are, you have nothing. Look at the Congo. They always present the Congo in books 
on TV is one, is one of the most, and maybe the most, uh, the, the richest country when it comes to minerals. Are we benefiting with those things? No, because those guys, they knew very well that this is, a, this is the richest country in the world in terms of minerals. But as long as these people, they're gonna be at peace with themselves in a peaceful system, they're gonna go, they're gonna send their kids to school, you know, they're gonna go work, the economy is gonna be strong, they're gonna control their country, they organize an election, everything's gonna be good. So in years, that's gonna be the most powerful country, not only in Africa, but in the region and maybe in the world. So we cannot control that country very well. The good way to control that country is to bring confusion into that, that country. So they put some plans in place using leaders in your country. That's what they Mr. Ma, Mr. Ma, Queen Impumi asked you a question to say, yeah. why have the Congolese not risen up and, you know, and, and speak against these vices that are happening in Congo? Don't they have platforms like these platforms that we have here to actually talk about these vices? Now, I would also like to add on, is it that the seed of corruption have been, has been deeply embedded in the Congolese citizens? And that is why the Congolese find it okay to equally just live with the corruption that is currently existing in Congo. Okay, I can say somehow, yes, the seed of corruption has been embedded, not in all the Congolese people, but in the great majority of the Congolese leaders, the guys in power, the guys who do politics. But we have platforms in the Congo, like on YouTube, uh, Facebook, TikTok. The problem is that we speak different languages. <laughs> we are in another world. We are in a French speaking, a French speaking country, and we speak Swahili and Lingala. That's why maybe you don't know those languages. Maybe you can come across a YouTube video where Congolese is speaking. You are not going to have an idea because they are speaking French, Swahili, Lingala. Let me tell you, when did you hear me speaking? And how did you come across my video? Because I spoke English. I said, Zambia is an English speaking country. Their president is now into something bad. If I speak French, Swahili, Lingala, no one is gonna understand what's gonna happen in, in, in Zambia pretty soon if they don't open their eyes. Let me do something in English. I do something very quick, six minutes only. And you know the effect in Zambia. <laughs> and if I try to check, that video has been viewed uh, 360,000 times. Uh, views, viewers, 360,000 viewers until now. The message went so far. Plus on my page. So yes. it is all and that some, going a lot of to people, a million. Some people took it. When I say on my page, TikTok page, 360,000 viewers. And this is one of my first videos to be viewed like this. I've been making, doing videos. I was like, wow, that the message went. That's why people are complaining themselves, even in Zambia. Oh, you want to bring war to Zambia? And we are not ready, we are not yet to bring war to Zambia. Zambians are our brothers and sisters. We want the Zambian people to open their eyes to keep the peace they have. We envy your peace, guys. A lot of people from Congo, how come they leave Congo? They get into Zambia, they settle there. You see a lot of people from Congo coming to visit Zambia and they say, I'm gonna stay in Lusaka. I'm gonna stay in Kitu. They don't stay in Zambia. They don't stay in Kitu and Dola, Lusaka because for the pleasure of staying. They envy your environment, your peace. 
even if you're not so rich, but comparing to the Congo, Congo is in chaos. That chaos has been created by the West. Uh, they're specialists in creating chaos. We do everything. Congolese youth, they demonstrate. This is to answer your questions. Congolese youth, they speak. Congolese youth, they're against the system. Now, there is these guys in power. Let me give you the latest example. It's about Felix Sekedi. He was not elected by the Congolese people. He was imposed. I think, Queen Pumi, I sent you a PDF of that article. They say, why Washington let a stolen, a stolen election stand in the Congo? Everything is clearly explained that two people played a major role to put security at the presidency at the state house in the Congo. That was the secretary of state. Uh, what's his name? Mike Pompeo with the US ambassador in the Congo. Mike Hammer, they control, they always control the situation. And what a lot of Africans don't know, all these big organizations, so-called international organization, did you know that they are funded by the United States of America, the majority, most of them? The guy who fund you, the guy who provides you the money is the guy who controls you. That's how it is. The United Nations, is always being controlled by America. So the last decision belongs to the United States of America, wherever you go, because America provides a lot of money to this world organization, the so-called international community. That's why they even killed, I told you, they killed the African Union. Try to investigate, you're gonna see that the African Union is a poor organization. They receive funds from Euro European <laughs> unions. Congolese youth, they speak. So who is against the Congolese youth? It's not foreigners. The guys in power, the police, corrupt. The army, corrupt. The guys who are ready to stand up and fight the youth who want to demonstrate in the Congo are not Americans. That the Congolese police system the Congolese military. Why do they do that? Because all the system is corrupt. They are not there to protect the Congolese people. They are there to protect a system of mafia where they receive money. And if you try to see all the big generals in the Congo, the colonels, they are in the copper mine, cotton mine, gold mines. Huh? When you check, you see the videos, like Queen Pumi was saying that, how come kids in the Congo, we see them in the mines, uh, digging cotton, digging gold. Who sent them there? They do it for a Congolese guy, for a Chinese guy. That means everybody is using those youth instead of helping them to open their mind, to liberate their country. No, the guys in power, the guys in the army, Congolese police, they play the same game. They prefer Congolese youth to go dig gold for them when they get it at a cheap price. They give just a dollar to a boy, but when they sell it outside, it's billions. That's what they do. Why are they doing that? They are not elected by the Congolese people. They impose themselves. As long as those soldiers, those police officers, those guys in politics, they are millionaires every day. They want that, that system to stay there because they deal with Paul Kagame, Yoerim Severi, and America. They want that system to stay there. Those are the guys who suppress the voices of the Congolese youth, who suppress, who suppress any movement created by the Congolese young people. I but know. One day we can liberate ourselves from that thing. It, we, that's what we need to educate the youth. Uh, that's what we are doing. Ellington has his hand up. Thank you. Ellington, you can come in. 
thank you so much. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how long the program is going. You know, I came in late. I just got home and my battery is like 5%. But allow me to thank our father here who is uh, teaching us a lot, like I did before maybe I can be logged out automatically by the battery <laughs> of the phone. <laughs> I want to say that um, Uganda is a whole different country. That I know. Deep in my heart, I know. I know a lot has gone on. A lot has gone wrong. But one thing I'm sure of is that Zambian people are not stupid people. The president right now, Mr. Haka in the might feel he's the wisest, he's the bravest, he's the kindest, he's Mr. Know it all. Or even the opposition leaders might think, you know, we'll just overthrow him or maybe win him in the next election. Zambians are 10 times thinking ahead. The way that Zambian youths, especially, the way that they treat these opposition leaders and any leader in this country who show you that Zambians are not cowards. When Zambian decides to make a decision, when they pull up to say, I'm going to make a decision, they are uncontrollable. Now, here is the thing. You spoke of the police, the military and everything. We understand there might be partial corruption in those, but the majority of them are actually feeling the pain of Zambia today. I'm speaking on behalf of Zambia now. They're feeling it. And these are the same people that ruled out the previous government that I should put on record. It's not only the people that are unemployed, it's the civil servants, it's the people in the private sector, it's the, even, it's the grandmothers and fathers who have never received their pension. Those are the people that got out the previous government. So with Zambia, I think we have a different mention and we'll make sure that mention sticks on the world map. If America or any Western country thinks they can come here through Mr. Haka Inde, they are very far from knowing who a Zambian is. This I can assure you. And in 2026 or even before, this government is going out. You mark my word, you cut this. Because more are suffering than those who are enjoying. And what a Zambian doesn't want is to suffer. Why? We understand that we are a positioned country. I understand you want to reject by saying this, they do what? We have had leaders like those. And I'll give you this example. We've had leaders like those. I'll take you back to the election of the first PF president, who was Michael Sata. Michael Sata was ra running against RB, Rupia Banda. Rupia Banda didn't do what HH is doing today. But did you see the amount of people that championed it? behind Michael Sat, they walk the streets naked around 018. They said, if you don't swear him in, we're going to blaze. We're going to set this country ablaze. But Arabi never did this. Arabi never even went too close to signing anything with IMF. Now think, ma, think far much less or far much better of a president who is actually touching people's lives. Yesterday I was in Chiragombe where people were fighting for Mirimiu. This leader has taken us to the old days. Let me tell you what we'll do. Those people that have been sent to us, for example, like myself, those that have, those that have sent people to say, go and deal with them, they better do it quick. Because if they waste time, when the tables turn around, what the youths of this country will do to them, would be 100 times what they have done. And this I have to put on the record. Zambia is not a country that you think you can toy around with. The people are quiet. And that phrase of saying they are, they are peaceful people, I'll rephrase it, they are not peaceful people. They are silent people. They burn from the inside. They will show this government what it means to be a Zambian. But now, if they don't deal with us, some of us that they are saying they will deal with, what we will deal with them with are these things. We will deal with them for every street child that dies on the streets. We are counting. When table is 10, we will deal with them for every police officer that was underpaid. We will deal with them for every pensioner that never got their pension. We 
will deal with them for every unfortunate circumstance that has happened in the Ministry of Health for the drugs that people have never received and they're dying. We'll deal with them for all the bragging and all the lingerie suits that they have worn. This is Zambia. Your and photo Mona. shoots. Kumwane Mona, <laughs> did you see those photo shoots? Kuyabai, the Kuma floods. I'm like, oh my God. They, are they trying to pause or are they trying to help people? You know, it was like, what do Hollywood do? Photo shoots. Could disaster our DMMU. I'm just like, oh my God. We are, are we in Zambia? <laughs> my brother, Bosco, welcome. <laughs> Kale, where have you been? Babosco, are you there? And there's one thing I'm going to tell you is this. You Zambians are lucky because today we have a lot of platforms. We have the internet, Facebook, TikTok, uh, WhatsApp, YouTube. During that time, when the war started, there was nothing. In the Congo, there was nothing. Yeah. That's why I wanted to underline 100 times. Yeah. You can save your country. They brought us into something because there was no communication me yes. that time. Yes. We didn't know what was, what, was going, what was going on in the Congo, in Central Africa, in Rwanda. We could just hear that there is a genocide in Rwanda. Imagine. What is genocide? People are fighting yes. for what? We didn't yes. know anything. When they finished, we said, oh, they want to topple Mobutu to take him out. Oh, Mobutu is a dictator, let him go. When they came, we just see them, we just saw them. Oh, they are here. We are jumping. We did, no communication means nothing. But today, people are informed on, on a daily basis. That's why we are here. That means Zambia can be saved. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zambia has 100% chance to avoid what is happening now in the Democratic Republic of the Congo because of technology. Spread the news. Don't let those guys to erect a base in your country. Don't let those guys to force money on your president. The money you didn't ask, the money you don't need. No, Zambia is so rich. Zambia can sell its minerals and gain its own money. The hand that gives you money, that forces money on you, is the hand, is the hand that wants to control you. Before they control you, they need to create a link whereby they'll be coming to your country. The World Bank people, the monetary fund people, they met with HH, discuss, discussing what? We don't need you. Why did they kill Ro Laurent Desiree Kabila? Because Laurent Desiree Kabila was rejecting anything they're proposing to him, presenting to him. He said, no, I'm a Congolese. He was saying that Congo is one of the richest countries. We need, we, we know how to lead our country. It's up to us to say we need this, 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 and that, and you know where to go to get them. Do not come to us and impose yourself. Don't call that president. You've been talking to that president. You need to say, no, give us time. They are coming to Laurent Desiree Kabila every day, forcing contract. Let's send this, let's send that. No. I don't see any benefit. My people are not going to take anything from this. No, 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 no. They saw that this guy is very smart. They hate smart African politicians. Those who are ready to protect their countries, no. They like business people, people who are greedy, who are ready to sell out anything from their country. You're gonna see when they introduce them on CNN, BBC, they are white. They are wise, smart politicians from Africa. They met with the US embassy. They're gonna, they're gonna tell you any kind of stupidity because they know that now they're gonna get hold of your country. Protect your country. We can communicate through technology. We're not teaching you anything. If you're an experienced that Zambian people, 
it's fast when it, get, when it gets into your country, but it's gonna take you 20 years and more <laughs> before they relinquish your country. Remember, Congo is an that, example. Hmm. That's why uh, Mr. Lushimba, when we slowly start seeing uh, wrong vices creeping into our country where yeah. our youth are dying in search of a better life by scavenging for minerals. We are not yeah. here to bash or disrespect the president. We are here to dis demand what is owed to us. Yeah. When go out signing things that the nation does not know, they will ask. And when they ask, do not threaten them with picking them up in the early hours of the morning, taking them to funny rural prisons in the name of shutting them up. Mr. President, stop threatening the people who are talking. We are just trying to help you. Before the Zambians speak to you in that ballot box, allow the people to talk. They are helping you to govern this country in a better way. That is all. You That's went correct. out and you have signed so many things. Tell the Zambian people what it is because this country does not belong to you alone. It belongs to all the Zambians. That's what I said in my six minute videos. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And a lot of Zambia they are attacking me. Talk about your country. Don't talk about our country. I say, yes, it's your president who put his hand. Those into are, the Congo. we call those people <laughs> praise singers. They yes. are called because they idolize the president so much. It's like a mini god. Yeah. So even as they insult us, they attack us, they call us names. That's so why I people, say, you know, one day the president will see the light and he yeah. will change. And what are you going to do? Hmm. That's a problem. That's what I always tell people. Do you really think that people want to leave their country if the country is good, well governed, where there's too much food, there is peace? No. Huh? There's no place like home. But if you see people coming to Zambia, staying in Zambia, the majority of the Congolese people, Congolese people, there's something wrong. Ask yourselves, the system has been broken. The, the system in the Congo has been destroyed by corrupt politicians who've been working with the West so that they can deal. Everybody is mineral, is mineral dealer now in the Congo. They've, they've forgotten about their, their, their own people. We don't want that to happen to Zambian citizens, Zambian brothers and sisters, no. Have a, a last question for you. Yeah. There's one person coming on. We have seen trucks line up to all the way from the border to as far as Kitwe. Do you have some inside information as to why we have those uh, the lineup of the trucks to enter Congo? Yeah, because they're taking minerals at a cheap price or for free. It's mafia mineral. <laughs> I told you last time. And a lot of SADEC region president, they are into that mafia too. That's why nobody in the Sadek region, I told you, I asked you a question. How come Congo has been in trouble for many years and Congo is part of the Sadek? Have you ever seen Sadek president to be, to regret that? To say, no, 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 no. We need to see it, push so that chaos can stop in the Congo, no. And there are, we saw a lot of trucks having Zambian plates, you know those mineral plates from Zambia. As long as they reach Kasumbalesa border, they got into the no man's land zone. They changed the plates from Zambia, Zimbabwe, Namibia plates, they put Congo plates. Huh? Can you imagine a truck that was coming from outside Congo with a Zambian plate? Once it got in the no man's land zone, 
before getting into the Congo, it has a Congolese plate now. And that truck is being driven by a Zambian driver from Kitwe. Uh, can you imagine? <laughs> Why do they do that? Is it not much here? Why do they change the plate from a Zambian plate to a Congo, to a Congo plate? So that they cannot pay taxes. It's like it's a Congo truck roaming around. Once it's full of minerals, they bring it out at Kasumbalesa border post again. In their no man's lands, they remove the Congo plate. The driver keeps it under his seat. Now they put a Zambia plate. Is it not sufficient to show you or to tell you that even Zambian leaders have been in that mafia for so long? You know, that's why nobody is ready to help Congo to be a peaceful country. That's what I told you. I told you that I had a video what was a truck, that truck driver was speaking in the name of many other truck drivers calling upon HH. Sir, Aka in the Chilema, Cyril Ramaphosa, calling the, uh, the Namibian president, Tanzania, Mama Suhulu. The guy called all the Sadiq region president by their names, accusing Congo. There's no state in the Congo. Why the guy was shouting? Because now there's this kind of situation whereby truck drivers coming from outside the Congo, once they get into the Congo, they are killed now. They are killed in the Congo. We have a lot of cases where Zambian drivers, Tanzania drivers, once they're in the Congo, they are killed. The guy was complaining calling that there's no, we wrote a lot of letters to Chisekedi, the president of the Congo, to the secret services in the Congo, to the army, so that they can provide us, we drivers with security, but nothing has been done. I was like, okay, I'm gonna answer that guy because I'm, I was willing to make a video in English, but I didn't make that. I think this is a good opportunity to answer the guy was complaining about Congo. He called Congo names. This is a jungle. Those guys are corrupt. They behave like animals, <laughs> you see? But what that guy didn't know is that those trucks they drive, they belong to some high profile political leaders in Zambia, Namibia, South Africa, Zimbabwe, who are into the mineral mafia in the Congo. That means they send those drivers to die in the Congo. They know that there's no state in the Congo. The army is corrupt. The police, corrupt. There's no justice in the Congo. There's no election in the Congo. Congo is a jungle. How can you send your child to a jungle? Right? With, with idea. Why are, not, why are they not ready to fix the Congo first? so that Congo can become a peaceful country, democratic country, the real democratic Republic of the, uh, of the Congo. No, they don't fight to convince Kagame and Museveni to stop attacking Congo. They are there, they close their eyes because Joseph Kabila was very smart. He knew that these people are corrupt. The Sadiq region president, they love money. Huh? Let me, let them get into the system. All of them are in the system. I told you last time. Now, when drivers die, those drivers, they don't know the, the truth. Huh? They think that Congo is a jungle just for the pleasure of being a jungle. No, Congo is a jungle because of its minerals. Congo is a victim of its own minerals. Everybody loves the Congo, but nobody likes the Congolese people. <laughs> That's how we say in the Congo. Everybody loves the Congo, but nobody loves the Congolese people. When they see Congolese people, whatever in the world, are your country, hey, to, are you Congolese people, why are you here? Hey, go back to your country. But they really don't know that if people, they start, they start fleeing their own country, 
that means there's something wrong in the country. That's the picture a lot of people don't know. Congolese people are not stupid to live in such a beautiful country full of rivers, eh? water, green, everything is green all around. We all dream to go back to our country. Yeah, for me, how are we going job. to go back to a country? Mama Chika Monica has a question. She's in the dark. Alex, welcome. Alex, you yes, have a Mama. question we're about to sign off. Mama Chika oh. Monica, are you ready? Yes. And I'm going to sign off in five minutes. If you have any questions. Okay, Alex, you have a question. Our guest is going to go. I'm a light if when I have to know. Okay, much quite a question you can ask here, your question. So Zesco, no more Zesco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Blackout. How do you call it? Shed loading? Shedding. Load shedding. <laughs> Load shedding, shed loading. Load shedding. <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. He, yes, we're about to sign off. Alex, you have a question? Uh, not really, Mama. I just wanted to add something. Uh, the, the the issue you raised about uh, attacking people who are talking, you know, which is very sad because uh, we all Zambians and we have right to talk about uh, in, injustice and uh, what we feel like, you know, it's not good for us. I think uh, Mr. President is aware that uh, when he was in the position, he went through a lot, even himself, he couldn't voice out. And all that. He promised that we're going to have freedom of speech. I'm sure it's on record. But why, are he, why is he or the government attacking people who are talking? They start a pay-dash life, you problem. When we are there, to are able to address the number, but pay-dash life comes down. I'm going to start talking about the government. Why? Instead of them just doing the job or who takes the future, my promise is to violate the pressure of us. So now, if you hunting, now they are start hunting around our land. No, why, why, why do they have to make us get scared to talk on behalf of uh, voiceless people? Because there are so many things which are going on in our country and people are not okay with it. But if we have that voice or if we have people who can stand out and, you know, try to talk on behalf of those people who are voiceless, is it a bad thing? I, I guess it's not a bad thing, but why are they attacking people? The two hundred is about to start that. But today, today, I'm going to be feeling like tomorrow. Two, two of them are going to come here for just you. You want to know? At least you better be kind to what they're saying. Ah, but there is a blacklist. With there is a, a text message circulating that uh, it was actually warning somebody who was on this show that to stop going on that show because everybody on that show is on a blacklist. Uh -uh. Me too. Am I on the blacklist too? I guess so. Okay, I'm I here to say um, you, um, you, you, I'm on your blacklist. You are also on my blacklist. I don't you care. also don't know who's behind me. I want to be the first on that yes. blacklist. We are on we each cannot, other's blacklist. We cannot change in Africa. Africa. You don't know who is behind me. They use fear. They want to instill fear in the youth so that they can yeah. stay in power yeah, uh, they can, they can justify the mafia. No, me, I'm not scared. I always tell people, I fear God and the angels. Yes. That we need sometimes scandals to happen wherever we are so that the world is going to talk about that. It's going to be like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go viral and the so president is going to stop exposed. that. Yes. yes, we need to expose so, those things. So the president whatsoever you do to the least of your brothers and your sisters, it shall definitely come to you as well. And that uh, because attitude, my sister, if those guys in, your, in power in Zambia, they were ready to change, they shouldn't say what they say, they shouldn't do what they want to do to the to Zambian people who speak up. That yeah. means they are not ready, it's a sign that they know what they're doing. They want to sell out to Zambia. Illegal. They are ready to sell Zambia. They don't it's want to stop. Illegal. What That's they are bad. doing illegal. is illegal. It's Bahaka in the, what you're doing is illegal. I don't know why your MPs are quiet. Members of parliament, what are you doing? 
The opposition leaders in Zambia, yes. they ask questions to the US government. They need to go in front of you Zambian people to give you the US government answer. Yes. To the and opposition. They need to ask yes. the speaker of the speaker of the national assembly need to yes. call the president to the house and explain what is going on. Let him that's release how. this information. Let me tell you, my sister, that's how it started in the Congo. You're gonna ask yourselves, how come there's trouble in the Congo? It started the way it wants to start in Zambia. There's no communication. They want to scare everybody. That's what politicians are doing in the Congo. Yeah. In Congo, people are being killed for speaking up. Who ki who's killing the Congolese people? Congolese politicians. You are in Lubumbashi city, you cannot speak up. They come at night and they kill your husband. You see your, his corpse tomorrow morning there. Can you imagine? They've been doing that for 20 years. And in times, Congolese people are scared. That's why they leave the country. So, some they even become refugees in Zambia. You, you wonder, how come Congolese people are in our country? Go back to your country. You need to know what is happening in the Congo. We want to fix our country. We envy your peace, I told you. Keep Zambia the way it is. We need to demand explanations from the guys in power now. What they send outside. It's going to have a one very man. bad effect. The president yes. is running this government independently. On the mission, he just goes by himself. He doesn't bring stakeholders like the opposition. That's a problem. Because him by himself with the, with the Secret Service or the OP, he doesn't carry the stakeholders. A lot of Why people. Why can't he carry the opposition with him so that they review these deals together as a team? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people were wondering what was going on between that U.S. Secretary of State and two presidents were just standing like this. Imagine. Selling out their countries, their minerals for free like this, without, without even presenting the case, even to the Congo and Zambia parliament, Congo, Zambia Senate. American people, they can do that. That US politicians cannot do that in the United States of America, no. In America, they cannot allow that guy to do that, selling anything valuable from America to they Zambia, to, to Congo in secret. They have to take no. it in Congress, it has to be approved. How come HH, Akainde Chilema, and Felici Sekedi could do that? They wanted to do that. In that Congo, we can understand. That deal is illegal. Me, I'm here to say we can that understand. deal is illegal. We in the Congo, Felix was say, not elected. That deal is illegal. Yeah. No one approved it. Yeah. Is it, is we it, in the Congo, we can understand. That he's not even from Copper Belt. Akainde is not even... The copper belt is not his indigenous area. That's a problem. Let him go and sell southern province. Country. Do you know what? Do you know what? That's something I wanted to tell you. These white people are very smart. They always put in power someone they know very well. When they am in a region, a province in your country, they're not going to allow people from that region to be in power. No. They're gonna make sure that they get something from another region to go destroy the other region easily because it's not, it's not from there. <laughs> That's what they do. I don't know because HH is not from from any of those areas. Yes, he's not going to. He's not from Copper Belt or Oruapula. He's it's not. gonna be easy for him. But you know? uh, in the name of Zambia, as a Zambian, he needs to be patriotic. Yes, and it's right now he's appointing That's what people. Ask. He, all his government is nepotism and regionalism. His government That's... is full of people who are from these other regions, not 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 Copper Belt. All That's over a bad Kuna, sign. Very That's few. a bad, very bad sign already for a republic. Yeah. That means that guy has a plan. He's gonna put. He's gonna push you into something you'll be regretting. Yeah. We have that experience. We've been suffering for 29 years. We people from the Congo. If you have questions, you had questions in the past. Why Congolese people are so stupid? Why Congolese people are not doing this or that? Now you have answers. I told you, we are not being fought by Rwanda and Uganda, no. Rwanda and Uganda, that means Kagame and Museveni are the tip of the iceberg. 
check beneath. You're going to see the huge Anglo Saxon. It's in the bedroom. Machine. Before yes. Anglo Saxon comes yes. in, who lets them in? Who let those people into our base? That's the problem. Yes. When they built the base in your country, that means someone from your country signed, allowed them to bring the base in your country. You open the door. It's a yeah. Trojan horse. You are opening the door. You are opening a can of worms. They, can, they cannot give you huge amount of money by any international organization if your parliament, your senate didn't sit and decide how much he, money to uh, Our president, I'm sorry to say, he has no respect yeah. for our parliament. He has That's no respect. He has bypassed the parliament and I think he should be impeached. Zambia is a democracy. He should be impeached for overlooking our democracy. And instead of staying in Zambia, he even crossed the border now. <laughs> Can you yes. imagine? Yeah? Uh, he stretched his arm into Zambia, Congo minerals. Welcome. This Mr. President of ours needs to That's be impeached because before this country is set on fire, and That's on me. Making these deals where he's not even from. That's on me, a guy from the Congo. You see myself. You see me speaking about Zambian issues. Why couldn't you see me all these years? It's because I said, oh, we've been going through something bad in the Congo for many years. That's the way it started in the Congo. We didn't know. Now, in years, we are well informed. The way they're entering Zambia, that's what they do. Smoothly, smiling. Our Once they're inside, innocence in this. that's it. There will be our no elections in your country. Claim innocence because he has been running one man show. Why are you no... running a one man show yes, in a that's democratic how it starts. country? And there will be no election in your country pretty soon. He's going to seek for the second term. And the third term is going to be a dictator. Uh, if today, you don't pay he attention. has just appointed judges as we are speaking. He has yes. appointed judges today. As I told you last time, I checked his background. HH is not a patriot, he's not a politician, according to me. This is my point of view. It's not my point of view. He's a businessman. He thinks in terms of business, making money. So he wants to make business with his Zambian life, you are, and Congolese he, lives. He can he even sell Zambia and the part Congo of Congo. To do lives <laughs> business on people's lives in Congo. And he, mm. I'm sure he has been doing it already in Congo. Now he wants to make it easy and establish a factory for himself in Zambia. That's my answer. All those trucks, that very long line of trucks, <laughs> From Kasumbalesa to Chingola, 30 kilometers. I answer the questions. They belong, most of them, to politicians from the SADC region. So now, because he has created a tension between USA, because I saw a diagram, everything I'm talking is on the internet. I saw a picture of how the minerals travel. They come from Congo, they are taken on ships to China. Yeah. And then China sends the manufacturers to USA. So mm. now HH has created tension between USA and China. So that's why he said, okay, we instead of taking these things to China, let us just make them here. And I think Sister Matipa asked me a question. Joseph Skabila, when he was president, he signed a lot of deals with Chinese people. Actually, if you try to, to look into that thing very well, sometimes, you know, these people, you know what they operate? After stealing a lot of minerals from the Congo, these Western companies, they are scared that in the future, they're going to be put, they're going to be taken into a justice court. They know that. Yes. What do they do? What do they do? They just change the headquarters, even the head of the company. They can put the Chinese there, but who's being controlled by the American citizens. That's what they do. And everything being done by the Chinese people, they do it for oh, America. My brother, everything they do it for America. On the internet, we are not going to drop names, but mm. whatever you are saying, is, it's on the internet. What we yes. are here to say is Zambians wake up, start reading, Follow these things because we have seen it is knocking at our door. The president maybe already said some people that. gonna tell me that. Oh, maybe I dream. I show you books. Huh? I, I repeat again. 
Kagame, Kagame's killing field by the books. The lies of the Tutsi in the Eastern Congo. In the end, after grabbing your land, they'll create a new tribe in Zambia. Uh, <laughs> they'll create a new tribe. For these people from Congo, they came in 18th century. Oh, they are here. They're from the Congo. They need the citizenship. They need a chief. They need a piece of land. That's what they're doing in the eastern part of the Congo. They want to impose people from Rwanda who came to Congo in 1963 as refugees. They want them to stay in the Congo. Why can they send them to Rwanda? Why can they That's go a problem. back home? All the guys who were refugees that time, who were, in, who were refugees in Tanzania, Kenya, Nairobi, and many places, even Kagame himself. Paul Kagame was a kid when his parents fled Rwanda. There was another war. Independence war. The Tusi people that are leading Rwanda with a, an iron hand. Then, when independence came, the majority of Hutu people they took power. That's when the minority of people they fled. Among those people were Paul Kagame's parents. They went to many places until they want to settle in Uganda. How come Paul Kagame did you want to stay in Uganda? Can you imagine? Kagame and his team. They were dreaming about their own country, that is Rwanda. They say, let's go back to Rwanda. Instead of sharing power with the majority, they wanted to get power for themselves, greedy people and selfish people. The minority want to keep power after killing, creating chaos in Rwanda. Kagame accepted to go back to Rwanda. Those Rwandan people were refugees in Kenya, Nairobi, Tanzania. They went back to Rwanda, but they are forcing us we Congolese people, so that those Rwandan people are refugees at the same time with Kagame's parents in the Congo, they want them to stay in the Congo. And they call them the Tutsi Congolese, Banyamulenge. Who's doing that? If you try to follow, it's Western uh, secret services as a reason not to finish the war in the Congo, because if the war finishes in the Congo, there'll be no opportunity for them to get into the Congo to steal minerals again. That's why they need to create something new. Every That's what's happened day. in Northern Ireland. You know, yes. in Northern Ireland, they did the same. Yes. yes. So, so we are saying, see, guys, this thing, this history repeating itself is nothing Even new. Kosovo. Yeah. Kosovo was a province from into Serbia. Yeah. They cut, they cut that province. They make of it a country. Yeah. And now Serbian people, they say, give us back our province. It's like they come to Zambia, they cut copper belt. They make a uh, Republic of Copper Belt. That's what they want to do in the eastern part of the Congo, if you don't know. Because minerals are endless. After killing Congolese people, now they want to grab the Congolese people's eastern land to put Rwandan people, starting transferring to see people from Rwanda oh, to get them it. into the Congo, to force them into God Congo. God forbid. That's what they're very dangerous. You know, you know, my mother used to say everything <laughs> that started came to an end. Mm. That's all I can say. And I think Look we for can books. Yeah. Enduring lies. Yeah. Everything they speak on Kagame is lies, lies, lies. It's not me who written this book, American people. Look for books. Well, before I go, this is in French. <laughs> Uh, this is in French. This one is in French and English. The Rwanda crisis, history of a genocide. This one also. Look for books. Yeah. You, know, you need to learn how to read fellow Zambians. Don't believe what people they, they, told, they tell you from the street. I showed you this book. Last journalists in a dictatorship in Rwanda. Bad news. There's no freedom of speech in Rwanda. You want to see the names of journalists Paul Kagame killed. There are more than, more than 100 journalists killed. Their names are here. There's a chart at the end of the book. Journal, journalists' names are here. All these guys, they've been murdered by Paul Kagame because they are news people. They are telling the world the truth. 
Kagame has a license to kill. Hmm? Kagame can kill easily with the blessing of the Pentagon, US secret services. No one's gonna take Kagame to court now. That's so Kagame can kill. Kagame kills every day. He's a serial killer. They know that. Read the names of journalists who are killed. Try to read. Everything is here, written by Western people. We're not creating anything as African. Huh? But you're going to see an African brother telling me stories. They say the world is in the hands of imbeciles huh? who are leading us. There is a bunch of imbeciles. <laughs> this is in French. <laughs> who govern us? Imbecile, stupid people. <laughs> huh? The return of Muami. This is in French. Le retour du Muami. That means the return of Muami. Do you know Muami? Muami, Muami is a, a, tri a tribe king. Yes, Muami is a chief. Yes. A chief, like Chief Kazembe, <laughs> Muata. Yes, we say yes. Muata Kazembe. Yes. Muata, the return of Muami. Kagami is a Muami. Kagami is leading Rwanda as a Muami. Rwanda is yes. not a democracy. Rwanda is a kingdom. Hmm? Look for books. Bernard de Bray. I don't know if there is an English version already. Read books. There is this, this book, the one of the famous. Before I show you this, Clinton money, Clinton cash. Who started chaos in Central Africa so that we can have 12 million people dead? It's Bill Clinton. If you try to see everything started when Bill Clinton became president at the White House. Is the mastermind behind the Rwanda genocide and the genocide and the stealing of minerals in the Congo. That's why he wanted his wife, Hillary Clinton, to become the president of the United States of America. Did you know that? Hillary wanted to become president of America with Congo gold behind. Who paid for Hillary campaign? Gold coming from the Congo. People didn't know. They leave chaos in the Congo so that they can be having easy money. Whenever they want any money from diamond, from gold, they go to a president, a Congolese president, put in power by force, like Felix Segedi. Felix Segedi was put there by America. Whenever they want money, Congo is like a pocket money place. <laughs> when they travel, give us money, you give. No democracy. They don't want democracy in the Congo. Read this book. You want to see. For instance, on this page, they explain clearly what the Clinton have been doing. Let me show you this chapter. African people need to learn how to read warlord economics. Read this. They have a, a tactic in the world. They don't want to cope in a civilized way with African countries. No, they create war first in your country so that they can come and take your minerals for free. That's what I said. They knew that Congo is one of the richest country, and one of the richest countries in the world in terms of minerals. So if we leave those Congolese people with their minerals, Congo is gonna become like paradise, like Dubai. Eh? Let's kill them. Let's take minerals for free. They create war first. They invade your country. This book is clear. They create a warlord economics. All those M23, they put them in, in, they train them in Rwanda. They are Rwandan soldiers and Ugandan soldiers. They train them in Rwanda and Uganda. They attack your country once they are in. How come they are very powerful? A rebel movement which is more powerful than a Congolese government uh, military. Can you understand that? Who, who gives them weapons? <laughs> Ask yourself those questions. They create a warlord system, then they start plundering your country. And don't forget to look for this book for a certain Canadian journalist, Judy River. Read the name. It's on, on what? It's on Amazon and eBay, Judy River, in praise of blood. It's a, against Paul Kagame. All the tricks used by America to escort Kagame to create the genocide was created piece after piece by the United States of America. She explains clearly. She was attacked by the United States of America and Canadian government. She's from Canada. 
if you try to read, she even produced some documents. Let me show you some proofs of some telegraphs, fax, messages, hmm? you see, giving proofs that what happened in Rwanda is a mafia, well-organized mafia from the West. In order to put Kagame in power forever, they had to create chaos, first of all. And the, to put that chaos on the back of the majority, the Hutu people, calling them genocide, to terrorize them, uh, to threaten them so that they couldn't have any, any say in Rwanda. And for sure, Hutu people, they don't have any say in Rwanda today. If you try to open your mouth, opposition leader, Kagame kills you. Kagame has the license to kill easily. American leaders, they know that Kagame is a killer. They are good with him. Hmm? Look for this. Garrison, huh? Check, you're gonna see. Let me show you this then I leave you guys. Let me show you the page about Rwanda genocide. It's here. Rwanda genocide. The two presidents. That's Kagame and Juvenal Abiyarimana. How we killed Juvenal Abiyarimana. It's explained clearly how Kagame, is Kagame who killed Juvenal Abiyarimana? Yes, yes. That's the, the plane's pieces. Huh? They're gonna explain clearly why they killed him. Hmm? Okay, Read all right. Book. So thank you, sir. I think <laughs> last comment. Book. Read, guys. Don't yes. believe what they tell you by African politicians are the most corrupt. Buy books, read. Yes. That's it. Thank you so much. Alex, last comments, Mama Tifa, last comments, and then we can close. Guys, bye-bye. My last comment is, I love you so much, Zambian guys, brothers and sisters. We are neighbors. We need to protect one another. You are so lucky because during that time, as I said in the past, there was no internet, no cell phone, no Facebook, no TikTok, no WhatsApp, no YouTube in the world. That's why we couldn't know what was coming. The devil that was coming to Congo, we didn't know anything about because there was no communication means. Today, there's no excuse to you, Zambian youth, to say we didn't know. My words is a, uh, like a testimony. If you leave your country, being driven into chaos. This video is gonna be watched even 10 years from now. God is gonna tell you, I sent you one guy <laughs> as a prophet. The guy was warning you, open your eyes Zambian people. You are insulting him. Where are you today? Now you need to pay for your stubbornness. So I don't want you to be into that state of Thank you, thank you. you so we are much. gonna end and Bye, then guys. we Bye -bye. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.